Hey guys, come on downstairs and welcome to a new era of Mama's Basement Sports Gaming. This will become the marquee series of this channel going forward. Born in 1970, the Cal State Fullerton Titans football program spent the first decade of its existence in futility. It culminated in outright tragedy when three Titan assistant coaches were killed in an airplane accident. But the decade of the 80s brought new hope to Titan Nation. In 1983, the Titans played in the annual California Bowl, a bowl game played in their own backyard. They fell to the Northern Illinois Huskies. In 1984, the program went 11-1 and, and finished the season ranked number 17 in the final UPI poll, the best season in Titan history. From that point on, the program steadily declined due to lack of financial support and the failure to produce results on the field. In 1992, after exiting a Big West conference that was hanging on to football by a thread, the school played their final game in Vegas, a loss to the UNLV Rebels. The football program was disbanded, and the name Fullerton State Titans was used for the last time. As of today, we are taking steps to reinstate the football program. Yeah! Hey guys, welcome to Cal State Fullerton Titans Dynasty. You guys have seen Dynasty series before. They are all over YouTube. This is going to be unlike any NCAA Football 14 Dynasty series you have ever seen before. It is way more than just Cal State Fullerton Titans Dynasty. It's an entire college football simulation, and we are dropping Cal State Fullerton into a living world of college football and I did this I, I felt like a lot of dynasty series were getting a little bit stale and redundant so I wanted to do something new and uh, I'm calling this a fan base series where I'm going to involve you the fans and what I am doing this is a review for some of you but some of you uh, have not heard it yet I want you to choose a school to cheer for throughout this season and let's take a quick look at our fan base numbers update. Number one, we have two fans from West Virginia. They are leading. Then we have one fan from each of the following schools, Cincinnati, Northern Illinois, Wisconsin, Nebraska, Minnesota, Cal, Rutgers, Michigan, Kansas State, Florida, Maryland, USC, 
Boston College, Notre Dame, Georgia, Florida State, UNLV, Tennessee, Memphis, Texas, Arizona State, and Missouri. I need all of you guys to jump on board. Start in the comment section of this video. Start throwing out the team that you want to cheer for. And let's start building these fan bases up. I'd like to see them in the hundreds by the end of season number one. So what you do is choose a fan base to join in the comment section of this episode. And we're going to be doing this throughout season number one. Season number one is going to be spent building up fan bases. And uh, we'll do a drawing for whoever can build up the biggest fan base. We'll get some sort of giveaway or something that I'll do at the end of season number one. We've got plenty of time to come up with what that is. So join a fan base, throw out your favorite school, or it doesn't even have to be your favorite school, just a school that you want to cheer for through season one of this Cal State Fullerton Titans dynasty. And when your team wins, when your school wins, you win. And I think what I'm going to do in season one of this dynasty is just take all of the teams that win bowl games and throw all of their fans into a drawing for uh, some sort of giveaway, whether it be a video game or uh, something like that. That's good, probably the most likely scenario is that I'll give away a video game of choice, uh, whether it's MLB The Show, which should be out around the time we end season number one, or something like that. Video game of choice. Uh, whoever wins it can choose. That's what I'll go with. Uh, so when your team wins, you have the opportunity to win. And that is what this dynasty is. So, without further ado, here is our Season 1 preview for Cal State Florida Titans football. I'm not going to go into a ton of depth as far as our players go. We're going to have plenty of time for you guys to catch up with all of them. But we're going to look at Mike Pringle here. He's a top 50 CFL player. He is our new head coach. He is also a member of the CFL Hall of Fame and a Cal State Fullerton Titan alum. And he has taken upon himself to resurrect this program. And here is our schedule. For season number one, we're going to open up in the swamp at Florida. A very challenging opening game. And then we are at home against New Mexico State and Pacific, who is also reviving their football program up the road in Stockton. California set up a little rivalry with them then we're at Duke we've got Cal Poly at home at Hawaii UTEP on the road Texas State at home uh, at NIU Western Kentucky Nevada at home and then we'll finish up the season at California all right as far as our NCAA season one preview goes let's take a look at the preseason top 126 I have done this before in our Southern Utah Thunderbirds dynasty that I have been doing. And we're going to do it here as we look at the season preview. Uh, watch for your teams. Cal State Fullerton, number 126. Not really a surprise. We are entering FBS football at the very bottom. UTEP at 125, Akron 124, New Mexico State, New Mexico Rice, Connecticut up at 120. South Alabama, 119. San Jose State at 118. Uh, the UMass Minutemen come in at 117. So watch for your school, the school that you're cheering for. This will give you an idea. Uh, I will let you know there were some huge surprises, though. Uh, Georgia State at 115. UTSA at 114. UNLV at 113. A lot of these lower teams, uh, some of them made bowl games. Some of them even won bowl games. So don't be discouraged if your team is down here at the bottom. Things changed throughout the season. Central Michigan at 112, East Carolina 111, Rutgers at 110 is our first Power 5 team on the board, and that's not a good thing for them. Kent State at 109, Bowling Green 108, Ball State 107, Old Dominion at 106, Oregon State 105, Colorado State 104, UL Monroe 103, Kansas at number 102, Western Kentucky at 101. Tulsa at 100, Nevada at number 99. Several of these teams so far in this bottom group are on our schedule. Illinois at number 98, Wyoming at number 97, Air Force 96, 95 is the Tulane Green Wave, 94 the Louisville Cardinals, 93 you've got the Louisiana Raging Cajuns, and the Buffalo Bulls at 92, North Carolina at 91 with Mac Brown at the helm, Navy at number 90, 
Number 89, the Arkansas Razorbacks. Georgia Tech at 88. 87 is the Eastern Michigan Eagles. Middle Tennessee State at 86. 85, Western Michigan. 84, Hawaii there on our schedule. 83, Southern Miss. And 82, the Pacific Tigers. So a couple of surprises here. Let's uh, look at this group and see what stands out. Pacific at number 82. That's an interesting uh, placement for Pacific. Personally, I think they should be uh, back towards 120th, but we'll see how it goes. You never know. Uh, another one that stands out to me, Western Kentucky at 101. That's kind of low for Western Kentucky, I feel. Uh, Oregon State, the second lowest P5 school at 105. So Rutgers at 110. Kansas State, or Oregon State, sorry, at 105. Uh, Kansas at 102 is down there for a P5 school, as is Illinois at number 98. Uh, how many of you guys see your schools in this group, the very bottom of college football? I'm going to let you know right now, a lot of these teams did not finish at the bottom. Several of them had surprisingly good seasons, so don't be discouraged if you're down here. Uh, who else stands out to me here as a surprise? Uh, Georgia Tech at 88. That's not a huge surprise. Anyway, let's move on. Number 81, as we do this middle group, the Arkansas State Red Wolves at number 81. The Sun Belt had a surprisingly a good group of teams this season. Colorado at 80, Toledo at 79, Vandy comes in at 78, SMU at 77, 76, the Miami of Ohio Redhawks, Kansas State at 75, that seems kind of low for Kansas State, Indiana at 74, Louisiana Tech at 73, 72, the Texas Tech Red Raiders, 71, the Ole Miss Rebels, 70, the West Virginia Mountaineers. That's our biggest fan base so far with just two people. But hopefully hopefully things explode here and we get a whole bunch of new people joining fan bases. Florida Atlantic, 69. NIU at 68. Cal at 67. UCLA, 66. San Diego State, 65. Marshall, 64. The North Texas Mean Green come in at number 63. Duke Blue Devils, who are on our schedule at number 62 the maryland terrapins at 61 ohio at 60 that's kind of a surprise that's pretty high for ohio uh 59 south florida 58 fiu 57 tennessee 56 the boston college eagles 55 troy trojans 54 the temple owls interesting temple ahead of tennessee that's i don't know about that arizona state at 53 wake forest at 52 51 is the Baylor Bears, 50 the Arizona Wildcats, 49 BYU, 48 we have the Purdue Boilermakers from the Big Ten, uh, 50 or 47 Pittsburgh, 46 Kentucky, 45 the South Carolina Gamecocks, we start to get more and more SEC teams here as we get higher up, 44 Fresno State, 43 my alma mater Utah State, number 42 Minnesota, 41 North Carolina State, Number 40, the Virginia Tech Hokies. 39, Memphis. If you see your teams up here, get in the comments, guys, and start joining a fan base. We need to build these up. Memphis at 39, Florida State at 38, and Houston at 37. So uh, if you're not sure where these preseason top 126 come from, there is a preseason outlook on NCAA Football 14 that lists the top 126. And if you're unaware, at any point during the season, you can go into the uh, Championship Contenders tab and go in and uh, sort the rankings. At any point in the season, you can see the full top 126. And so at the end of year number one, we'll probably uh, look at these again and compare where the preseason was with where these teams ended up. All right, let's look at the top 36. USC at number 36, Northwestern at 35, Cincinnati at 34, they are probably in for a good season, Mississippi State at 33, TCU at 32, Army at 31, that's surprisingly high for Army, Boise State at 30 is the top Mountain West team, and I think they might be the top G5 school, no we got UCF still that needs to uh, be on the board, Missouri at 29, Oklahoma State at 28, Miami 27, Virginia 26, 
Stanford at 25 as we get into the top 25. Nebraska 24, Washington State 23, number 22, Syracuse. Number 21, Iowa State. Uh, number 20, the Iowa Hawkeyes. So Iowa and Iowa State neck and neck right there. Wisconsin at number 19. Michigan State at number 18. Three Big Ten schools in a row. And there is UCF. I think they're our highest G5 team. Auburn, 16. Penn State, number 15. Utah, number 14. Number 13, UW. These are going to change a lot. I can guarantee you that. But... This will give you a little bit of a idea of what we're in for this season. Texas A&M at 12, Oregon at 11, Texas at 10, Notre Dame at 9, Florida at 8. Number 7, Michigan, and now we get into the top 6. Number 6, the LSU Tigers. Number 5, the Ohio State Buckeyes. Number 4, the Oklahoma Sooners. Number 3, the Georgia Bulldogs. Number 2, the Alabama Crimson Tide, and that leaves us with number one, not a huge surprise, Trevor Lawrence and the Clemson Tigers. Let me, uh, let me, uh, I better get into this. The roster that I had was from the 2019 season, so that's going to be season number one. So a lot of familiar names, and we're just going to use that to build up fan bases. You guys are familiar with the teams. It'll help me kind of uh, get used to how I produce this. I won't have to spend as much time digging up players' names because I don't know them pretty well. So basically, we're going to replay the 2019 season, and then at the end of the year, we'll do the uh, NFL draft and see where some of these players go. I know they went in real life to certain teams, but we're going to mix it up and see where they go in this. And uh, I hope you guys will be excited for like subsequent seasons when we start getting recruits in and we start to learn new players and I'll you know I'll be more focused on players as we get into new seasons of this dynasty uh, whereas in season one I'll be more focused on teams and basically getting used to producing this series as soon as I get used to and get a system down for producing this I'll be able to spend more time researching players and bringing those to you all right, week number one. These are the games that I'm going to have highlights of in our week number one uh, end of the week highlight show. We have a bye actually in week number one, so we don't play Florida until week number two. So these are the games in week number one that we're going to have highlights of. And I'll show the scores of, of pretty much every game, most of the most important ones. But these are the ones that we have highlights of. And uh, so game one, New Mexico State at number 10, Texas. And the line is 28 and a half in favor of Texas. These lines are completely arbitrary. They're just to give you an idea of how I feel about these teams. And uh, I don't know, just, just they're arbitrary, but there's something to uh, just give us an idea where I feel like they, they fit. Clemson, uh, number one, playing the number three Georgia Bulldogs. And we'll have highlights of that. Clemson, nine and a half point favorites in my mind. Toledo at number eight, Florida. I'm going with Florida at 26 and a half. Temple at number nine, Notre Dame. Notre Dame, 15 and a half. USC on the road at Hawaii. I'm going with USC at 18 and a half. Utah State at number 14, Utah. I'm going with the Utes at 12 and a half. Penn State and Syracuse play a neutral site game at MetLife Stadium. And I'm going with Penn State, 6.5. Washington State at Auburn, Auburn, 13.5. NIU at Iowa, Iowa, 19.5. And, and Pittsburgh at Florida State. I'm going with Florida State at 10.5. So the next episode, coming up, episode number two, will be our week one highlight show before we get into our first game in week number two against the Florida Gators. That's it. It's Mama's Basement Sports Gaming. Welcome to Cal State Fullerton Titans Dynasty. Let's get it rolling. Tomorrow, we'll have episode number two here on Mama's Basement Sports Gaming.